Hello everybody, this is John Fenn. Uh, SupernaturalHouseChurch.org is our website. And once again, bringing a short teaching about walking with the Lord, the disciples, discipleship process with the Lord. Today, asking the questions, do we, can we command angels? And the reason for asking that, it may be, sound like a silly thing, except for a small group of charismatics who uh, got into that practice back in the maybe 80s and 90s, 1980s and 90s. And um, it was something that always grieved our spirit, Barb and I. We, we, we never felt right about it. And we didn't know why the Holy Spirit was grieved when we'd hear people, you know, command an angel to do this. Basically, it would happen in this, for those that are unfamiliar with it. A person would be in prayer, and they would, you know, state whatever it is that they're, they're praying about. And then they would say, and I command you angels to go forth and bring forth peace to this person. Or I command you angels to go forth and do battle against the demons of something. And they would command the angels. And uh, like I said, it always grieved our spirit, but we didn't know why. So uh, those who know me are aware that the Lord has been appearing to me since April of 1986 and teaching me different things at different times. Um, that's part of my call. That's part of what I, I do. That's part of, part of the, the, the vitality, the life that I lead, part of the word and the spirit in balance, and, and that my eyes have been open regularly to the things of the spirit. And so, you know, different times the Lord would appear to me. Uh, initially, honestly, initially, honestly, it was to, uh, I think, correct some of my teaching. I'd be in prayer, and, and typically, suddenly, my eyes would be open, and the Lord would be there. And he would say something like, I want to teach you about, um, you know, I want to teach you about prayer. I want to teach you about angels and demons. I want to teach you about how I start and shut down churches. Uh, he would teach me different things. Usually, these would go 45 or 50 minutes. And I'd be in the spirit with him, and he'd be teaching and, and everything, and then boom, I'm, I'm back in the living room, so to speak. And, um, and so this has been going on since 1986 for, with me, April of 1986. Now, in more recent years, uh, assuming most of my um, uh, theology was corrected, and, and I certainly have learned a lot through those visitations, um, but now he, teaches, he talks more about um, you know, what's going on in the body of Christ and things like that, and only here and there teaches me things. Uh, from the word, but basically it's this, that during a visitation, this particular visitation was a time when he said, I want to teach you about angels and demons. And so we were there, I was in the spirit, we were talking about this, and he taught the whole thing, and I'm, I'm not going to teach everything, in fact there are parts of, of each teachings that I've that have been too personal that I haven't shared. Uh, but this one particular point in the teaching, I was able to ask him, I said, Lord, uh, can we command angels? Can we command angels? And he looked at me and he smiled, kind of, he has this habit of kind of tilting his head a little bit, and he kind of went, <laughs> and they looked at me and he said, you don't even know how to pray as you should. What makes you think you know how to tell an angel what to do? And of course, I knew that reference when he said, you don't even know how to pray as you should. Uh, I knew it was a direct reference to Romans 8, 26 through 28. And Romans, and I'm going to take this little rabbit trail, Romans 8, 26 through 28 says uh, that we don't know how to pray as we should. Uh, but the Holy Spirit helps our infirmities. That infirmity is that we don't know how to pray as we should. In other words, I've got family scattered all over the country. I've got lots of people in our in ministry who support us and who write in prayer requests. You know, and I, I, they'll write in a prayer request, and I'll take a snapshot on my phone and, and, and use that on a daily basis to lift them up and pray for them and everything. But, but I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what their day is going to be like. So we don't know how to pray. It's an infirmity. You know, I mean, I, other than say, uh, bless my sister in Florida, you know, that she has a good day, a safe day, you know, what can I, what do I know? And so it says, we, we don't know how to pray as we should, uh, but the Holy Spirit helps us, joins with us and helping us against that infirmity because he knows what is the mind of the Father. He knows the mind of the Father. And so we pray then in, in tongues and groanings and, and utterances, which can't be uttered in articulate speech. And all these things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Uh, this little rabbit trail here, uh, Romans 8.28, that one where, that says all things work together for the good of those who love God, that is not a standalone verse. It is the continuation of a thought that goes from verse 26 all the way into verse 29. And, and in other words, you know, a, a, a friend dying of a disease, that's, you don't want to say to somebody, oh, God works all things according to, you know, for our good, or some tragedy involving a family member or a loved one. That's not the time you pull out the Romans 8.28 and says, oh, God works all things together for good. That's not what was, that's not the context. That's not what was intended. In fact, that statement doesn't line up with anything else in Scripture. 
you know, where you see some statement where no matter what happens to you, God is, is working all things together. We could say on the large scale, of course, he can, he's a master at using what the devil uses against us and turning it around for our good. Of course that. But my point is the context today. What he said was, we don't, we don't know how to pray as we should. We have an infirmity. We don't know how to pray as we should. So therefore, the Holy Spirit joins with us to help us as we pray in tongues and groanings and utterances, which can't be uttered in, particular, in, particular, in articulate speech. And we, and we bring forth these things according to the will of the Father because he knows what is his will. And all these things are working together for our good and for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. That's the intent of verse 26 through 28. So... When the Lord said, you don't even know how to pray as you should, what makes you think you know how to tell an angel what to do? I, I understood the context. And so I said, but I said to him, I said, Lord, I said, I'm going to need chapter and verse on that. And, and he said, I'll give you two. And he said, have you not read in the days of my flesh in the garden when I told my disciples that I could ask the Father for more than 12 legions of angels and he would send them? That's in Matthew 26, 53, by the way. Um, and he would send them, and he said, I, even I, in the days of my flesh, would have had to have asked the Father for the angels. And then he said, he said, and have you not read what I told the overcomers in Sardis? That is in Revelation 3, 5. He said, have you not read what I, called, what I told the overcomers in Sardis? When I said that as they overcame, I would not blot their names out of the book of the living, but would instead confess their names before the Father and his angels. And he let that sink in a little bit. And then he said, so you see, even before the cross to after my ascension, the angels still belong to the Father. Your righteousness in me and your place in me has not changed that. The angels belong to the Father. So you don't even know how to pray as you should. So what makes you think you know how to tell an angel what to do? So that was the, that was the, the gist of that teaching there. And I asked him, I said, well, some people, you know, use Psalm 10320. Psalm 10320 says, bless the Lord, ye his angels who uh, excel in strength and obey his commands, hearkening to the voice of his word. And, and he said, yes, he said, the difference is heaven initiates it instead of earth. He said, what you're talking about is people who find a chapter and verse and use that as a basis. And then based on Psalm 103.20, think that they can command an angel to do what the, to do, uh, you know, something for them. And he said the difference is, he said the angels are the fathers, therefore their assignments are initiated from heaven, not from earth. And I said, but there have been times in the spirit where I've been aware that angels are going to do things. He said, that's exactly right. You've been in the spirit. You're, you're in tune with what the father is doing. And that is why. So that was such a good, that was such a good lesson. And so it explained why we've been grieved in our spirit when somebody would pray and they'd say, I command an angel to do this or, or that. And, you know, it's interesting, I'll go on, uh, let me close with this. Uh, during one of the visitations, uh, one of the angels, I asked him, and this gives you an idea on their perspective, I asked him, I said, I said, so how do you feel, I asked this angel, I said, how do you feel about me being in charge of you in the next age? And, you know, because, because right now, it's like they, they listen to the Lord, they, they, the Father, they do everything that they do and everything. But it's like, I asked him, so, so how do you feel about me being in charge of you? Because, because Paul talked about in, uh, in 1 Corinthians 6, 2, he said, in the, in the age to come, we will judge uh, the world and angels. The word judge there doesn't mean heaven or hell. It means it's an administrative thing, that in the millennial age, the saints will be the rulers, will be the judges, will be the administrators. And so we will judge the world in that standpoint. It's an administrative term. And that I, so I asked him, I said, so what, how do you feel about that? And he looked at me like, like I, I, he looked at me like I was about to slap him in the face, almost offended. He, he went, oh, it is right. It is proper. I said, I said, why? And he said, remember, we know him as creator, but you know him as savior. And so I want to leave you with that, just that reverence and that respect and that awe of the fact that the angels belong to the Father. And we can ask the Father for angels, but we can't command them. We can be like Jesus, who in the garden would have had to have asked uh, for 12 legions of angels. We can ask, but what happens to them and their assignments, that's up to the Father. So all right, bringing some balance to the Spirit and Word today. God bless you. We'll see you next week. I'm going to talk about binding and loosing and see how that fits. And uh, so anyway, see you then.